Welcome to another episode of Fort Bend Mathematics Tutoring. Take a moment to soothe your nerves. Remember, these is just numbers. They can't hurt nobody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about subtracting decimals. All right. Here we have problem number one with 11 and 346 thousandths minus 2 and 105 thousandths. Anytime you're subtracting or adding decimals, ladies and gentlemen, you need to make sure that your decimals are lined up. In fact, this is the only time when you need to have the decimals aligned. You don't need to line up your decimals when you're multiplying, and you don't need to line up your decimals when you're dividing. So here, I'm going to first start out by showing that my decimals are lined up, and I'm going to bring that decimal down here, and then I'm going to subtract from right to left. So 6 minus 5 is 1, 4 minus 0 is still 4, and then 3 minus 1 gives me a value of 2. And then I'll need to borrow from this one here. That makes that 1 and 11, and 11 minus 2, this gives me 9 as my final result, which is 9 and 241 thousandths. That's the answer. And I'm going to go ahead and put a red box around my result, because that makes me feel good. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was number one. Let's move on to problem number two. In problem number two, we have 51 and 31 hundredths minus 2 and 39 hundredths. So start out by making sure that your decimals are aligned, and they are, so I'll bring my decimal down here. And then, because I can't take 9 from 1, I'll need to borrow from my 3 here. So the 3 becomes a 2, and this 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 9 gives me 2, and then, since I can't take 3 from 2, I'll be borrowing from the 1 that gives me a 0 here and makes that 2 a 12. 12 minus 3 gives me a value of 9. And then, since I can't take 2 from the 0, I'll need to borrow from the 5. This 5 becomes a 4. The 0 becomes a 10. And then 10 minus 2 is 8. And I'll bring down that 4. So my end result here is 48 and 92 hundredths, which is the answer to problem number 2. All right. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. On to problem number three. In problem number three, I have 112 hundredths minus 112 thousandths. So ladies and gentlemen, if you paid attention to the first two problems, you would have noticed that our problems were stacked vertically. And that's exactly the way I prefer to subtract my decimals. So problem three will be rewritten as 112 hundredths minus 112 thousandths. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, one thing I like to ensure is that all of my place values have some type of representation. So notice that here in our first number, I didn't have a thousands place showing. So I'm just going to put a little placeholder in there to assure that everything is lined up and organized. Since I already have my decimals lined up, I'm just going to bring down that decimal just like that. And notice that since I can't take two from zero, I'll need to borrow. So I'll be borrowing one from the two that leaves me a one, and that makes that zero a 10. So now I have 10 minus 2, which is 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then I have 0 minus 0, which is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. And then I'll bring down this 1 because 1 minus 0 is 0. Your final result here is 108 thousandths. And that's the answer to problem number 3. All right. So yeah, I don't do the problems horizontally. It looks ugly to me that way. So therefore, I always stack my numbers when I'm adding and subtracting decimals. So here we have another problem that's given to us horizontally, and I'm going to need to rewrite it and stack the numbers. So here we have 1 minus 98 ten thousandths. Well, the decimal, ladies and gentlemen, for your first number 1 is behind that 1. So when I rewrite it, I'll show that I have 1 and as many zeros as I need. And in this case, I'll need four zeros behind the decimal place. This is going to be minus. All right. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be able to take 8 from 0, so I'll need to borrow. So I'll borrow from the 1 here in the 1's place, and this 0, it starts out as a 10, but it eventually becomes a 9 after I borrow. And then this 0 becomes a 10, and then I'll have to borrow from that to leave a 9. Here, this becomes a 10, and then I'll have to borrow from that to leave a 9. And then finally, yes, finally, this last 0 stays a 10. So now we're able to subtract. 10 minus 8 gives me 2. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 
9 minus 0 is still 9, 9 minus 0 is still 9, and you have that decimal that was lined up, and you can just place a 0 here, which is optional, by the way. So you can submit your answer without the 0 in the 1's place, and that'll be just fine. However, for this problem, I went ahead and wrote the 0 in the 1's place. So this is my answer, 9,902 ten thousandths, and that's the answer. All right, let's check out the next one. In problem number five, I have 19 minus 1 and 198 thousandths. So once again, I want to rewrite this. I want to have my decimals aligned, and I'll add any placeholders that I may need for organizational purposes to organize the numbers. So I have 19, and I'm going to go ahead and show three place values behind the decimal because I have a number with the smallest place value being the thousandths place. This is going to be minus 1 and 198 thousandths, just like that. From here, I'm going to line up these decimals. I'm going to borrow from the 9, which will leave an 8 here. This 0 will eventually become a 9, so will this one, and then that final 0 will remain a 10. 10 minus 8 gives me 2. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 1 is 8, ladies and gentlemen, and then 8 minus 1 gives me 7, and I'll bring down that 1 to get a result of 17 and 802 thousands, and that's the result. That's the answer. So I'm going to put a red box around there. There we have it. That's the answer to problem number five. In problem number six, we have 12 and 9 tenths minus 15 and 4 tenths. When you have a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, you always want to put the biggest number, the largest number on top, okay, regardless of sign. So I am recognizing that my first value is a positive number, whereas my second value is a negative value. That's negative 15 and 4 tenths. So when I set it up, I'll rewrite it as negative 15 and 4 tenths plus 12 and 9 tenths just like that. I'm going to go ahead and line up the decimals and know that my end result will be negative because the negative value is larger so therefore the answer will be negative. I'll need to subtract because my signs are different. Anytime you have unlike signs you'll subtract and keep the sign of the largest value, the largest digit there. So here the 5 will become a 4 because I'm borrowing. The 4 becomes a 14 and then 14 minus 9 gives me 5. Then subtracting 4 minus 2, I end up with 2, and then 1 minus 1 is just 0, so you can stop right there. That's right. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and bring this negative sign a bit closer because it's a little lonely. So let's bring that negative right there. So yeah, you end up with negative 2 and 5 tenths as a result, and that's my answer for problem number 6, ladies and gentlemen. So that concludes this video on subtracting decimals, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able to donate, please do so as that helps us bring you more free math videos. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations. Did you learn anything? Do you need to review your notes? Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself. I am learning mathematicals.